everybody. I figured I would uh, give a bit of an overview of an installation of uh, ADSB in my recently completed Skybolt. Uh, finished this project at the end of October and uh, the FAA came out, gave me my uh, paperwork to fly. And uh, in the meantime, I've been building a little time in another guy's Skybolt uh, with him for the, uh, to, satisfy, uh, to satisfy the insurance company's requirement of some time before they go ahead and insure this one. They wanted time in a Skybolt as opposed to recent experience in a Stearman and a Star Duster 2. Uh, I was going to wait till after the initial flight of the airplane to put the ADSB unit into it. But uh, I still uh, have to get a couple hours in here. It's winter time. Um, as we near Thanksgiving in Chicago here, the weather sucks. So I figured I might as well go ahead and get the ADSB installed. The January 1st date is coming up pretty fast. So uh, I'll share with you what I'm doing, how I'm putting it in this airplane. This is the belly skin on the Skybolt. Um, originally, I put my uh, VHF COM antenna up here. This would be the front, uh, just behind the landing gear. Uh, clamshell doors kind of sits in between the landing gear legs and it works fine. And uh, I had a transponder that I did install in the airplane. Uh, planned on having it since early on in the project because we lay under the uh, OC Bayo here in Chicago. Uh, but there's not a lot of real estate on the airplane to be putting antennas. So even though this is a little bit closer than the recommended distance to transponder antenna, VHF COM antenna. This is where I put my antenna for the UAVionics uh, Echo UAT unit, the transceiver for the ADSB in and out. And so I just uh, opened up a half inch hole here in the belly and I did rivet a reinforcement plate on the inside. And there it gives some extra strength. Go ahead and put that. at that there the interior. Okay, and I'm sorry about the heater noise in the background here, but like I said, it's uh, past mid-November here, and uh, the weather in Chicago does suck. It's cold. So here's the opened up belly on the uh, sky bowl. So that gives me uh, some room to work on running the antenna cable that I'm going to need to get in, just getting access to the wiring harnesses down low for the radio stack and stuff and I'll show you where I'm going to mount those units. Okay, I've got the top panel over the instruments uh, here off. I'm working on something else at the same time. Um, this is where I'm going to have my remote GPS antenna up on part of this area. I've got a magnetic compass on a pedestal that sits up there. But where I am going to mount my boxes for the ADSB is going to be right uh, here along the right side of this radio stack box that I built. Um, just making a mounting plate. area here. It's nice and close to uh, power and it'll be a short antenna run down to the belly of the airplane. Um, so that's where we're going to mount the units. Alright, don't mind my table here. It's a little messy. Like I said, we've been working on this already or I've been working on this already. And uh, these are the, the boxes for 
what I need for an ADSB compliance. Like I said, I have the transponder in there already. It's an older narco unit. Uh, but I elected, rather than replacing the transponder, um, this was quite a bit less expensive to go this way. Um, with the Echo UAT unit, and then the Skyfix uh, WASP GPS box from UAvionics. And this is the mounting plate that I cut. And I uh, got my two mounting locations there to go flush onto that, the side of the radio stack, the radio rack that's already in the uh, cockpit of the airplane. Uh, looking at the instructions for this, it looks like it's going to be a pretty simple uh, wiring install. And um, so that's where I stand right now. We'll go ahead and uh, get this wired up and we can talk about that. Yeah, the wiring is pretty straightforward on this. Uh, actually, a number of these wires are going to be clipped short. I'm not going to need them. We're going to go from the number one pin on the Skyfix GPS receiver over to the number six pin on the UAT unit on the transceiver. So we're going to make a connection there. Uh, as far as power and that stuff goes to these units, the uh, aircraft ground, uh, the wires are black on uh, both of the plugs. Both of these connectors, black wires are brown, and the aircraft power red. So, um, looking over here at my wiring, I'll tie the grounds in together and the, <coughs> the reds in together, and then this number three pin will go to the number six pin here on the harness, and that'll be it. The rest of the wire will be removed. We don't need it. Okay, ADSB uh, install complete. Give you a rough overview. Not a lot of real estate in something like this. But uh, anyway, on my airplane, the radio stack is down here. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is where I mounted my ADS boxes down here on the right side of the stack. And uh, I had some screws that were uh, long enough that this plate that I fashioned to attach these two units to, I could screw that down so it's good and secure. And uh, really, you've got the one wire that runs between the two units for the comm. The rest of this I just bundled up on the pigtails. I didn't want to cut them completely off. Got the uh, in external antenna cable for the GPS, which runs down up behind the panel. And then it comes out on top of my uh, instrument panel cover here. And it's next to my magnetic compass. Now, the one thing about this external antenna is when it comes, at least mine anyway, has a uh, round magnet in the base of it, which uh, I cut out. I called UAvionics, talked to their tech support. The magnet was not integral to the function of the antenna. It's just so you can stick it someplace, not an airplane. Not a lot of steel parts on the exterior where you're going to be able to stick that thing. So. Uh, this was the ideal spot for me. It gave me a nice open view of the sky <clears throat> from the cockpit of the airplane through the canopy. However, with the magnet in there, it threw the compass way off. So uh, they said, go ahead, cut it open, take the magnet out if you want to. And uh, I mounted it with some double sided tape after I did that. Now, you can see the outline of the magnet on the bottom of this thing when you get it. It's a round magnet in the center. And I just took a Dremel with a little end router type bit on it that come in the most, with most Dremels. And uh, 
I tried splitting this case initially at the seam, forget it. All you're gonna do is muck up the case. It was easier to just take the little end bit uh, at a moderate RPM, nothing real fast, and uh, went around in a circle a few times on the outline of the magnet, the magnet came right out. So I'll lighten this thing up just a little bit. And um, I didn't have to destroy the case trying to get the magnet out. And it gives you plenty of real estate on there yet on the bottom after you remove that magnet. I didn't bother closing it up or anything like that, but uh, the double-sided tape does just fine. Securing it there. Now getting back to uh, where I've got these units down here on the side of the radio stack. Um, the way that I mounted these with the pigtails forward, even though it's at a slight bit of an angle, it still gives me the opportunity to read these three LEDs on the side of the uh, Skyfix <clears throat> um, should I need to refer to them for troubleshooting later on. So again, my, my antenna cable comes out down here and runs down to the bottom skin of the airplane like an 18 or 20 inch piece of RG58 uh, um, so overall pretty simple install uh, I still have to fly it and see how the performance report comes out but again I've got an older Narco AT58 transponder in this thing um, I had it tested once before after I picked it up off of eBay along uh, with my encoder and uh, it worked just fine. It passed its uh, two-year inspection that I would have needed for you know, VFR flight um, in the areas requiring a mode C. Being here in Romeoville, Illinois at Lewis University Airport here, we're under the mode C veil so I knew I would need this being based here. <clears throat> And uh, I was hoping that the airplane would fly quite a bit sooner than uh, it's going to. So now with the ADSB mandate coming up in uh, about six weeks from now, I decided to go ahead and get this installed and I'll test fly it. And I'll have to take their airplane over to uh, one of the avionics shops. Uh, we don't have one here at Lewis, so I'll have to fly it and maybe over to Aurora. Uh, get the, the two-year check done on the transponder and they can double check the ADSB uh, report as well. Very simple to program this thing uh, through the uh, app, through the um, setup app that I downloaded on my phone and uh, you know dial in my tail number and my uh, a decimal number or whatever that is that the FAA assigns to me so um, the installation app has a monitoring function I rolled the airplane out of the hangar turned everything on and it acquired a GPS signal just fine and it was uh, it had my tail number and a proper uh, hexadecimal number that it was reporting so I should be good I'll show you real quick how the antennas came out on the belly and I still got these landing gear leg fairings loose uh, I didn't want to cinch everything down until I made sure everything would work now there's not a tremendous amount of real estate on the belly of this thing my comm antenna it's way up front here. Uh, it's bent whip. It should work just fine. It seems to receive and transmit just fine. On the belly, then, we got the uh, ADSB transceiver antenna in the middle. And in the far back portion of that skin is the transponder antenna. A little bit closer than probably what is ideal and optimal for these antennas, but again, that's it as far as uh, metal real estate under here. I was not about to go to the back area over there underneath the fabric and 
and um, that's where the metal ends. I wasn't about to go back into here, try mounting any type of a ground plane or reinforcement plate. Uh, it just wasn't happening. And uh, so again, maybe a little less than ideal, but that's how I installed mine. We'll see how it works.